Hi everyone, I am Susan Jacob and in this video, I am going to show you how to effectively remove the epinucleus and the cortex in cataract surgery. In this first case, you can see that I have done multiple rings of hydrodelineation and both the endonucleus and the epinucleus have together been prolapsed out. This is a soft cataract and can easily be removed by mostly using just vacuum alone and you can see that at the end, it is mostly the cortex that is left behind. The cortex is then easily removed using the IA probe. What I am using here is the coaxial IA probe and you can see that I am stripping the cortex from all around, working 360 degrees around the capsula bag and removing the cortex. What I do is hold the cortex at the periphery and then strip it towards the center of the bag. Extra care needs to be taken for the subincisional cortex and the port should always be visible. You can see that I am making tangential movements to be able to strip out most of the subincisional cortex at the same time. I do a quick capsular polish now before putting in the intraocular lens. Now in the second case, I am using the technique of viscoprolapse where I use viscoelastic and inject it under the epinuclear shell to bring it out at least partially into the anterior chamber from where the rest of it can be removed by aspirating with the IA probe. Again coming back to the technique of cortex aspiration, I start from the sides. I grasp the peripheral cortical strands uh, which uh, are coming out from the capsulorexis edge and once I have achieved sufficient occlusion of the IA tip or the aspiration port, I strip the cortical sheets inwards by moving towards the center of the capsular bag. This stripping action allows me to remove large sheets of cortex at one time. Now we will also see how cortex stripping can also be used for epinuclear removal. The technique here is to gently aspirate the cortex that is peripheral to the epinucleus which results in the epinucleus as well getting loosened up as you can see here. You go to multiple sites and do same, repeat it all around so that the epinucleus becomes loosened from all around and comes to lie free floating in the anterior chamber. This also allows simultaneous uh, removal of the cortex. Since it is mostly the epinucleus that is then left in the capsula bag, the port is faced upwards and uh, you can press down fully to 300 or even 500 millimeters mercury and the epinucleus will come up to the uh, IA port on its own. However, care should be taken to always keep the IA port facing up and never downwards towards the posterior capsule and it also should be placed in the center of the pupil. Here is another case where you can also see how the peripheral cortex is aspirated to also get the epinucleus to fold inwards and therefore be removed along with the cortex aspiration. This technique is especially useful when the epinucleus proves to be sticky and does not come out easily. Here is another case where uh, you see that the epinucleus is being stripped to the center. Some stripping and some of the points loosens up the rest of the epinucleus and then allows uh, the epinucleus to be removed effectively. Here again you can see me removing the cortex. Uh, I am going to multiple points in the periphery aspirating and uh, once I get sufficient occlusion of the aspiration port I pull inwards to remove the cortex as a sheet. Subincisional cortex uh, is more of a problem and you can see that I maneuver the IA tip around or swivel it around the uh, wound to be able to get access to the cortex in all sides. Cortex aspiration requires special care in femtosecond laser assisted cataract surgery. As you can see that the rexus has already been created using the femtosecond laser and the nucleus has been removed. Now if you take a close look at the rexus, you can see that the laser has also cut the peripheral cortical strands right below the rexus margin and therefore the cortex that has to be aspirated or grasped with the IA tip is further inside the capsular bag as there are no cortical strands which protrude outside the rexus rim as in a normal cataract surgery. Therefore, one often has to insert the IA tip slightly more into the capsular bag and uh, under the rexus rim in order to be able to get a good grasp of this cortex. Subincisional cortex is always challenging and you can see that uh, what I'm using here is the same coaxial probe. I hold it more perpendicular. Uh, there is fluid escaping out through the main port but I always take care to see that uh, most of the irrigation uh, continues to happen within the anterior chamber. You can also see that I'm using cap pack mode here and uh, turning the probe more perpendicularly and since I'm on cap pack mode it gives me a greater margin of safety in being able to aspirate it without causing a posterior capsular rent. Since I'm not being able to grasp the cortex just under the rexus, what I do now here is go and grasp the sheet right off the posterior capsule and then turn the aspiration port upwards before depressing the foot pedal completely. Once I've got a good occlusion of the port, I can rub the uh, 
uh, aspiration tip with the blunt rod in my left hand and therefore help the cortex to get aspirated more easily. I do hope you enjoyed watching this video. Thank you so much.